Good morning. This is the Ramblings of an Undisciplined Mind podcast for Wednesday, December 23rd, 2015. So, Merry Christmas Eve Eve. I am working from home today. If you heard air quotes there, that wasn't a mistake. You should probably hear air quotes there. I'm actually going to knock off early today. Uh, and I don't have a ton ton of stuff to that really require my direct attention still in 2015. This is my last planned work day for the year. I'm probably going to have to get on and do some stuff next, next week for a project, but... Uh, Obviously, I will be doing as little as possible. But as far as the day when I got to put in the hours, today is the last day. So I'm not, I'm not driving to work. I'm actually driving to the grocery store. I need to get some eggs because I'm making deviled eggs tomorrow. And we've got like six eggs in the house. And that will not do since I need to make a dozen. Plus, you know, a test egg or two. So, I'm, I'm trying to beat the crowds to the store. And get that. So, there was a tweet that came across my stream. And I thought I liked it. But I, I was looking back through my likes last night and I couldn't find it. I think it was by either uh, Jeff Height who's J.A. Height on Twitter, or it was uh, Scott Roche, Spiritual Tramp on Twitter. I think it was one of those two guys that commented about how the, the, the new generation, uh, the current generation maybe, of, of science fiction readers, the younger science fiction readers, aren't reading the masters. And that kind of blew my mind a little bit. Yeah, not because I don't think it's true, but because I hadn't really considered that. So first of all, let's define who are the masters of science fiction. So, you know, to begin with, you've got Robert A. Heinlein, or Robert Heinlein. You've got Arthur C. Clarke. Um, You've got Isaac Asimov. Those are the big three in my brain. Um, I'm going to throw in there also... um, Frank Herbert for Dune, which is really my gateway drug into hard sci-fi, um, thanks to a middle school teacher. Uh, so you get Frank Herbert, uh, Robert Silverberg, who I haven't read in a long time, but I read a lot of his stuff because we had it uh, at the library where I grew up. They had a number of his things. Robert Silverberg. Um, and I'm going to say Larry Niven for Ringworld. You know, to me, and there might be some other ones that I'm, I'm forgetting, but those are kind of the names that really stand out to me as, you know, the old school sci-fi masters um, whose stuff just set my imagination aflame. Uh, you know, Ram, the Rama, Rendezvous of Rama by, by Arthur C. Clarke. Uh, I love that book. And, and that's, you know, probably for science fiction, that might be my number one book that I would love to see made into a movie. Um, we've, we have the technology now to pull that one off pretty nicely, I think. Um, you know, Isaac Asimov, uh, I think there's some, you know, they, they got some great story. He's got some great stories. He's got the whole um, robotic laws that were used as the basis for the movie I, Robot, although that story is not one of Asimov's stories. Still a brilliant movie, and it's still a fun way to play with his three laws, you know, keeping up the integrity of them, but yet kind of giving them a new twist. So, I, I, you know, that was cool. Uh, but but his, actual, his actual stories dealing with robotics were really great, plus the Foundation trilogy. Oh, my God. I mean, that needs to be... Yeah, I don't know. That'd be kind of hard to to get to the screen. Um, 
That really would. Maybe sci-fi could handle that as a miniseries. I'm not sure. Because it spans so much time. Um, but, I mean, you know, Foundation inspired one of the key images from Gorilla Poet. So, so that's had a lasting effect on me. Um, Robert Heinlein. Uh, I really like his stuff. Um, I, I've... Mm, I think I've read. I think I've read everything he's written. I'm not totally sure on that. There might be a few that have slipped out, but I've certainly read all of his you know, major seminal works. Um, and that's part of the reason I love Nathan Lowell because it you know, he went through this phase where he was doing like the Young Man in Space, uh, and very early on, Nathan Lowell was running a, a promo that's like, "Hey, do you like Highland Young Men in Space?" series, and you might like Quarter Share, and I'm like, yes, sign me up, please, and, you know, the rest of sort of history, uh, that, that, that got me into, to, uh, into Nathan Lowell's work, and, uh, I've never been sad about that, you know, I did just reread, so, you know, so, so to me, it's, it's a little surprising that we got people that are in the sci-fi that haven't re- read these guys, but I guess I shouldn't be surprised, because they are... You know, in a sense, in some ways, they're they're a bit outdated. Um, their their preconceptions were showing a bit. You know, obviously, from a technological standpoint, there are things that you know don't really stand up terribly well now. I just reread Childhood's End, like last week. Just reread Childhood's End um, because I, I I I wanted to do it. Um, I was inspired to do it by the sci-fi series, which I haven't watched yet. It's on the DVR. Uh, I have not yet started Childhood Den, but I'm going to. So, you know, some of the things that were funny was they referred to the microwave as the radar range, small r. So he was making the assumption that the term radar range was going to stick, but kind of go the way of, you know, the Xerox. I'm going to go Xerox something or, or using the word Kleenex to mean any, any kind of tissue, even if it's puffs. You know, the other thing that was, that I, that I've forgotten about, that, that came up in Childhood's End, is the, is the thought process that at some point in time, human being is going to wake up from its dream and slough off this barbaric nonsense called religion. And, and I kind of forgotten that there was, you know, there, that was a very prevalent theme in this, in this older science fiction. It came up in Childhood's End. I guess it'll be interesting to see if they do that, anything with that, um, in, the, in the show. You know, it, it was, you know, and it wasn't even really, it wasn't even really so much that they're trying to say, well, you know, if this happened then people would abandon it. I mean, that was kind of the, kind of the case with Childhood's End, but it, it really kind of came across as, you know, I don't like religion, so because I'm into, I'm into science, yo! And um, so therefore, I, I, need, I should devise a way that the rest of the world would finally get as hip as I am and drop it. Uh, so he's kind of showing his biases there. Um, I think in the modern era, you know, even if just used as a plot device for dealing with, even if you're not really big in the, in the religion, it can be an interesting plot device. And I, and I think most people you know, realize that it's probably going to be here in some way, shape, or form forever because we're always devising new religions. Uh, that's something actually that is, is looking like it's going to be a major theme in this third Mistborn book that I'm reading. Which is technically fantasy, not sci-fi, but but whatever. So, yeah. So I, you know, that just got me thinking about about some of the older masters. I did enjoy rereading Childhood's End, uh, very much. Uh, I was surprised. You know, there there were some key bits that I remember, but there was a lot I didn't, and I did not remember the ending at all. So I'm going to be interested to see how they adapt that. 
uh, for the miniseries because it takes place over a number of years. So uh, I, I need to watch that and uh, and see what's going on. But you know, if you're a newer sci-fi reader and um, you know you haven't read any of these guys, you know, I you know, Childhood's End, Arthur C. Clarke, Rendezvous of Rama. Um, Maybe 2001 A Space Odyssey. That was more of a novel adaptation because I think that got written after the movie, but it was based on story ideas that he and Stanley Kubrick had, 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 had beat around. Um, so Robert Heinlein, A uh, Stranger in a Strange Land, um, is, is one of his, his key later novels. Uh, of the Young Man in Space, there was Have Space Suit Will Travel, um, gosh darn it, I've got a whole little box set of these things at home, and now I'm, I'm have I'm drawing a blank. That space suit travel is definitely one of them. That was probably my my favorite. Um, I don't know. If you're interested in more of those, um, and can't find them, I am me on Twitter. You know, uh, hit me up on Twitter, or email or something. And I'll go find my set and, and give you different, give you the rest of the titles that I have. Um, you know, Frank Herbert Dune, obviously. Although he's written some other stuff that I've read that I've enjoyed as well. Uh, but Dune is obviously the seminal work there. If you haven't read that, uh, I would suggest doing so. And, and you know, don't base your thoughts of Dune necessarily on the movies. Although I've enjoyed the movies, but I think I've enjoyed the movies because I love the books. So if you've just seen the movies or the miniseries, and are like, what the hell is going on here? This is confusing me, and it's annoying me. The books would probably make things a lot clearer. So, uh, Herbert, so that's, uh, 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 Osimov, you've got the iRobot stories. So those are short stories. Uh, those are good. Uh, there is The Caves of Steel, and there's a sequel to that one, and that's about a robot detective that's trying to solve, I think, a murder, um, and, 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 and so that's kind of interesting. Building on the three laws thing uh, a bit. Uh, and then Foundation for Asimov, which I already mentioned, uh, which is... What was that? I was, I was just... I was just you know, we're, we're kind of getting close. To, you know, the whole thing about Foundation was you had these people that came up with this... this um, uh, uh, new discipline in, like... Um, sociology where you could mathematically predict uh, trends in history. And I, and I just heard something recently where it kind of sounds like they're getting close to that, which is interesting. So that's Asimov. Um, Larry Niven, Ringworld, the Ringworld series. Uh, and then uh, Footfall was another one. I don't know if that was like considered a big, a big you know, book of his, but it was one where it was about an asteroid hitting the Earth, and, and I really enjoyed that That. Uh, and dealing with the aftermath. I really enjoyed that book. Um, da, da, da. So who else? I mentioned six guys. So I had Osmoff, I had Clark, I had Heinlein, I had Niven, I had Herbert, and I had... You know, one I probably... I don't know if I mentioned or not is Ray Bradbury. Uh, he's probably the one I need to read the most of. I've read a few of his works, but not a ton. I, I should probably... I need to get more... Um, I need to get more, uh, you know, in, into Ray Bradbury. I really should. Uh, he he wrote the Illust Illustrated Man uh, as a good one, the Martian Chronicles, which I don't think I've. I may have read those. I know I remember seeing a really good television adaptation of that. I think it was in the eighties. I thought I thought it was really spectacular. Um, so and then I believe Fahrenheit four fifty one. God. I hope I'm getting that right. But, yeah, Ray Bradbury, I would also uh, chuck into that old master's list. So, yeah, if you're a newer sci-fi reader, check out some of these guys. You know, obviously, some of the technology, you know, they're making guesses on technology. And some of it they're not going to be correct about. But, you know, the funny thing is there's some of it that, you know, they're not far off. Um, in a lot of ways, they were the inspiration for a lot of the technological developments that we have today. You know, among the, the inspirations. We've also got, you know, shows like Star Trek and things like that that, that are part of that. But, uh, uh, yeah, so, and these are things that, are, that have inspired me and have come out in my writing. And one of the things that was interesting about reading Childhood's End was I didn't realize he'd lived long enough, Arthur C. Clarke, 
to see Independence Day. Because the beginning of childhood then, these spaceships just appear and they're hovering over, over, over all the cities of the Earth. And, you know, it, it, and I've always felt that Independence Day, the movie, was always like somebody read Childhood's End, and in Childhood's End, the aliens are uh, benevolent, and they're here to help us, literally, really, and for true. Uh, and I'm not really, that's not a major spoiler to share that with you. Um, and I've always felt that somebody read Childhood's End and said, well, that's great, but what if they weren't b- benevolent? What if they were, what if they had an agenda all their own and humanity really didn't fit into it? And, and so I've always, I've always felt that, you know, the, the scenes that I had in my brain for Childhood's End was always, you know, the beginning of ID4. And, and Arthur C. Clarke even mentioned that in this new forward for the, I just down, I, I, I thought I had this book, I did not. So I just bought the, the Kindle edition and there was a forward from 2001. And uh, he'd seen, and he mentioned that, that, you know, you know, basically, that's the beginning of, of childhood Zen. If you want to envision what it looks like, there it is. So that was kind of kind of interesting. Because of that, it looks to me from the little bits I've seen in the trailer on the uh, for for the sci-fi thing, they went away from the huge saucer platter shaped ships, probably to get away from that ID four image. They kind of took that over and stole it. Um, you yeah, know, but what are you gonna do? Anyway, I am I'm long today. Not too surprising given the subject matter. Um, so coming up, there will be a podcast tomorrow. Um, that's going to be a little different. That's all I'm going to tell you. Uh, do check it out. I think you'll want to check it out tomorrow. Don't let it slide. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to leave it there. Uh, Christmas Day, there will be no podcast. And then Christmas Boxing Day, I guess you should say, not Christmas, you know. Post Christmas, but Boxing Day the twenty sixth. Um, I will. I will plan on putting a podcast out. I'm going to be at the in laws. I will probably uh, happily <laughs> go out for a walk or go drive somewhere or do something. Uh, so anyway, I will be back tomorrow, and I'll be talking to you then. So, be seeing you. <laughs>